Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Nerf Dino Squad Rex Rampage. This blaster came out in 2020 and is part of the Nerf Dino Squad line. So with that all the way, let's get started by talking about the box. Starting off with the front of the box, as you can see we have this very open packaging right here uh, where we can see the Rex Rampage and its 10 round magazine. We also have some pretty much standard uh, front of the box information such as how many darts the blaster comes with. In this case, it's 20 Nerf Elite darts. So the Dino Squad uh, color scheme version. Basic description of the function of the blaster. This is a motorized blaster, so motorized blasting. And because it's motorized, this blaster requires four double A's, which are not included. Also, this blaster is ages eight plus. No mention of plastic free packaging on this. Flipping it to the other side, we have a little bit more information uh, about the blaster. I also apologize for this glare here. I'm trying to figure out how to fix this. Probably gonna see if I can find a polarized, polarized lens. So starting off with the back of the blaster. This blaster has 10 dart storage in its stock. Uh, it appears to be five darts on one side and five darts on the other. Here we can see it's 10 dart clip, magazine, motorized, blasting. And though they don't mention it, this blaster actually has a sight, um, a, a proper sight. So with that all the way, let's get this thing out of the box. All right, so here we have the Rex Rampage out of the box. Um, and strangely enough, this blaster actually includes instructions, um, unlike the other Dino Squad blasters I've reviewed so far. At least most of them just had the instructions on the box somewhere, usually on the bottom. But uh, this one actually comes with instructions. It's a very simple uh, one sheet instruction telling you how to load the batteries, use the blaster, and uh, how to clear jams which this blaster appears to have a jam door. Next, we have our darts. These are Nerf Elite darts with the Dino Squad color scheme, lime green tips with the bluish green bodies. You get 20 of these. We have our 10 round magazine. It has this kind of like scars, I guess, scratches on it uh, with this very intense looking 10 on the, on the magazine. It has a uh, rubber feet too. Pretty standard on uh, some of the higher capacity magazines. And then we have the blaster itself. Starting off with the stock for the dart storage. The darts just simply click in like so. I do not know uh, if this will damage the darts in any way, like put grooves in them. Um, I guess don't have darts in here uh, for very long. But as you can see, we can put five on one side, and we also have room for five on the other side. There we go. Seems to hold it pretty well. Um, but it does appear that the darts do somewhat get in the way, so I guess pushing them up can avoid getting them in the way. And believe it or not, this blaster actually has a scope, unlike the other Dino Squad blasters, which don't really have sights. Uh, this one actually has a built-in scope. This scope is not removable. It is molded into the blaster. And I normally show this during the accuracy test, but that is your sight picture if it will focus. There we go, a little crosshair like that. And to load the batteries, we have our battery door right here. That's one simple Phillips head screw. Pops the lid off. We have here some Kirkland Signature batteries. Not sure why I mentioned the batteries. I guess it's um, for liability. If something goes wrong and it's the battery's fault, we know what batteries to avoid. I think that's probably a good reason. <laughs> anyway, can screw the battery door back on. And the rev trigger does not move, so I think this has a magazine lock. So we'll put the magazine in. It does turn on. Okay, so 
at least for now the Rex Rampage doesn't have any issues. Um, I bought this blaster a while back. I don't know where the receipt is, so hopefully it continues to work. Uh, moving on to the jam door. It is a little hard to get at. Guess you could use, uh, if you actually have fingernails or um, use like a screwdriver or something to open it. Um, the rev trigger appears to not function with the jam door open, so this has a jam door lock as well. As you can see, it's a pretty, pretty nice open area where you can uh, maybe remove darts if anything gets jammed, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna load a few darts here. Let's just take five darts here and see how the blaster fares, see how it fires. All right. We hit a jam. Oh. All right. Seems to function. That little jam there, I'm not too sure what that was all about. Um, magazine release right here and the trigger guard comes out pretty easily. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, I don't know. All right, so moving right along to magazine compatibility. Um, as we've seen in the past, certain blasters don't, certain Nerf brand blasters don't like Nerf, certain Nerf branded magazines. So I'll just be going over those real quick. Uh, starting off with the, uh, well, in my case, infamous 18 round magazine because of this little lump here. Certain blasters do not like it. But we should have a pretty good chance because this magazine has a little lump there too. Shouldn't really be a problem. Fits in there snugly. Don't really have a problem with it. Next Nerf magazine would be the 25 round drum. This one really shouldn't have any issues. Fits in there pretty well. Uh, Non-Nerf magazines start off with Dart Zone, 12 round magazine. Oh, it's a very snug fit. Uh, very snug. In fact, I'm thinking all these magazines are pretty snug, but it won't catch. It will catch on the magazine catch, but it is quite snug, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Adventure Force Pro magazine. Fits a little bit better than the Dart Zone one. Does catch. And then finally, Dart Zone Pro 15 rounder. Uh, I've had experience where this magazine doesn't work in certain blasters, so that's why I'm testing it here. Fits perfectly fine. Anyway, so with that all the way, let's get this thing on the range and see how it fares. All right, here we are out on the range. As you can see, we have our targets set up over there. We're gonna start out with Nerf Elite. Um, we're going to be firing 10 rounds each, and for those who are wondering, that is your sight picture in a better view than what we showed on the table. Uh, let's see if we can hit anything. Oh, hit something. Oh, got it. <laughs> not the greatest, but that is Nerf, and Nerf is not the most accurate. I think I hit two, but that uh, one right in the... Right in the back corner, of that egg that just fell. I think it was the wind. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next dart. Here we have Adventure Force. Uh, before I load it, I just want to show off that uh, it does hold it pretty well, and you do have to uh, push them up high to high enough so your wrist clears it. It's only on the side you're uh, gripping it from, because if you're gripping it from the left, you have to raise the left ones as well, but. Uh, there's that. Seems to hold them uh, pretty well, so I'm going to quickly load this magazine. I do want to state my thoughts on this dart storage. In a way, it doesn't make sense uh, because this is a magazine fed blaster. I think it would make more sense if it was a magazine storage, like you could fit another magazine in there, uh, rather than having uh, individual dart storage. All right, so we're going to load up with Adventure Force. And Nerf was going all over the place, but so let's see how Adventure Force does. Oh, a lot straighter. Oh, okay, okay. I'm okay. I'm actually kind of impressed about this blaster, at least a little bit, because those are flying pretty straight. I feel like they were flying a little slow. 
Um, but they also were flying straight at least. They weren't going all over the place. Uh, we'll comment on the sight real quick. Uh, it doesn't work because how far the barrel is from the sight, you can't really see the darts. Even angling it upward, you still can't see the see where the darts are landing. So uh, you're just better off looking down the side of it or kind of shouldering it and trying to aim where it is. It does help that it's a uh, semi-auto, so can uh, accuracy by volume. Anyway, move on to the next dart. As I showed before with uh, Adventure Force, we uh, have dart zone here. Doesn't seem to fall out. Though I will say they do feel a little bit looser than the other darts, especially this one right here, just kind of floats around there. Kind of reminds me of some of the other dart storage blasters I've reviewed, where if their dart zone in particular seems to uh, struggle to stay in dart storage. So there is that to keep in mind. But of course, uh, with mass produced items, there is plenty of variety. So uh, this might just be a Myrex Rampage and not yours. All right, we have loaded up here uh, Dart Zone. <laughs> Trying to hit the bottle. It, 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 it wasn't going. Uh, yeah, but I will say um, it's kind of like as usual, Dart Zone is kind of the middle ground. You know, uh, Adventure Force is a straight shooter, but really slow. Uh, but And then you have Nerf, which is really fast, but for, but just not accurate. And the Dart Zone is kind of that middle ground where it's kind of fast, kind of accurate. What's that all the way? Let's move on to the range test. All right, so here we are at the range test. As usual, for context, the chicken marks 25 feet. The swan marks 30 feet, the frog marks 40 feet, and the far back wall marks 50 feet from where I am standing. We're gonna be starting out with Nerf Elite. Uh, just like the accuracy test, we're gonna fire 10 rounds each. These all will be straight shots. Let's see how it fares. 30 feet, I want about 35, that first one. 30 feet. Rapid shots seem to be going a little bit less. Relatively consistent, the uh, 35 feet. Uh, a couple rapid shots brought that thing, not 35, 30 feet, not 35, that's 30 feet. Um, pretty consistent, we're going that far, about the 30 foot mark. Uh, but rapid firing seemed to bring it down to like 25, 26. Let's move on to the next dart, which will be uh, Adventure Force. Well, that was an angled one. That went 40 from angle. Well, oh, that went 20, 25, 26. And then rapid firing brings it down. So it's going about 27. But we did see from the first shot, which was angled Nate, to the 40 feet. And that, believe it or not, was kind of a slight angle. It wasn't really that sharp of an angle. So if anything, you could pretty, pretty much get to 40 feet with this thing with Adventure Force, believe it or not. Uh, but that, of course, was angled, but consistently falling right between the swan and the chicken, so about 25-ish feet, maybe 27. The last dart we have is the uh, dart zone. 30 feet, less than 30 feet, 30 feet, 26. And after firing, goes right around where the chicken is, so 25 feet. Anyway, not much else to say. So let's check out those ranges. All right, so here are our ranges, our kind of range data. Um, kind of want to start out with, uh, well, let's talk about Nerf. Uh, Nerf seemed to go the furthest consistently around the 30 foot mark. So right, right here in front of the Swan, a lot of them are landing here with a few of them landing over there around the 35, almost 40 foot mark. Uh, which is quite impressive, but of course it's a nerf, not the most accurate. Uh, rapid firing seemed to bring it down just a little bit, right around here, 27 foot mark. Uh, Adventure Force, consistently going around the 27, 28 foot mark. So right around here, 
uh, but rapid firing was being all the way down to 25, uh, though a lot of them bounced over here. Dart zone, kind of the middle ground, going a little closer to the 30 foot mark, but not really, uh, and rapid firing ended up at the chicken, which is 25. I'll put the ranges up on screen now. I will say I am a little impressed with this blaster so far when it comes to ranges and how uh, straight shooting it is with quite a few darts, well, except for Nerf, but like with the other two darts. Seems to be a pretty consistent blaster as well. Anyway, with that all the way, uh, let's move on to the speed test. All right, here we are at the speed test and uh, that is apparently the speed of light according to the chronograph. So, uh, we're gonna start off with Nerf Elite. 18, 20, 19, duplicate 19, 18, 19, duplicate 19, 21, 22, 21. That's meters per second. Um, let's uh, switch it to FPS instead. Let's just go over the numbers while we're waiting for it to load. So here we have our numbers. Um, no wonder why it's so small. Um, so we had an average of 64.2 uh, with a maximum of 72 and a minimum of 59. And as, as you can see, these are the actual speeds as, uh, yeah, mostly in the 60s. Here we are with Adventure Force, this time with it on FPS mode, not meters per second, feet per second. 65, 69, 70, 71, 65, 71, 70, duplicate 70, 64, 70. So here are the results. Uh, we actually have higher average this time at 68.5 we had a maximum of 71 a minimum of 64. all right last dart dart zone 66 68 64 error <sighs> thought we could go a day without an error but we didn't we didn't 64, 65, 63, duplicate 63, 64, 67. And for sake of, to replace that error and for sake of review, shooting one more downrange. 73. All right, so here are the, here's the data. We had an average of 65.7, a maximum of 73, and a minimum of 63. So uh, with that all out of the way, let's move on to my final thoughts. So what are my final thoughts on the Nerf Dino Squad Rex Rampage? But before we do that, as usual, we need to go over where I bought it and how much I spent. I purchased this blaster at Target for $36.99 USD. Now there's a couple other prices uh, to mention. First off, it's original retail price of $44.99. USD and its new retail price of $32.99 USD. So this blaster um, started out at a pretty high price. Uh, it was lowered once because I did not buy this blaster on sale. Apparently $36.99 was its second retail price and now its current brand new, I guess, new retail price is $32. So there is that to keep in mind. It's changed prices three times, so that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, let's move on to my thoughts on the blaster. All right, so we're gonna talk about this blaster in points, starting off with overall aesthetics. Just like the other Dino Squad blasters, um, it does use the dinosaur aesthetic very well. This, of course, being a T-Rex, um, and I think it looks really cool. Uh, even, with this, even with this scope, I think it looks pretty cool with the scope molded in to the blaster. It blends pretty well. Overall, I think this is probably one of my uh, one of my favorites of the Dino Squad blasters. I do like this blaster's aesthetics. Ergonomics. Now there is, f uh, I mean, where to start? As usual, can't complain about it too much when it comes to size of things, uh, because it is a blaster made for children. Uh, but 
I do feel as if there are some ergonomic issues that even an eight year old would have problems with. Uh, first off, the rev trigger is a little small. It also is a little stiff, at least on my Rex Rampage, it's a little stiff. So it, can't, it does get a little uncomfortable when trying to hold this down because the spring behind it is pretty heavy for some reason. The overall trigger pull is fine. I'm okay with that. It's a trigger and it works pretty well. Oh, that is another, another problem that I seem to have with the blaster is the lock disengages first before the button is pressed all the way. So if you do press this thing lightly, you do have the chance of firing darts without the motor spinning, jamming the blaster. So there's that. Magazine release. This thing is, it's all right. Um, it is kind of awkward to use, especially if you're not trying to hold down the button here. You gotta find how to fiddle around to push it out. I don't know. It might not be, a, might not be everybody's cup of tea. Uh, Something else to mention, the magazine well is quite tight with every kind of magazine. When we were checking uh, aftermarket non-Nerf branded magazines, uh, it seemed to be pulled Dark Zone and the Adventure Force Tactical Strike magazine uh, pretty tightly. So it does require some force to put magazines in as well as taking them out. There is that. Stock on the blaster is I, I think fairly comfortable, um, even me being an adult. Uh, the scope lines up directly with my eye, even with this kind of small stock. Uh, there is a comfortable place to hold the blaster up front, right underneath the, the dinosaur's mouth. Not much else to complain about, other than the grip. Uh, I think I mentioned this on a couple other Dino Squad blasters. This like weird texturing with the, the scar scratch texture does uh, that's, it kind of makes it uncomfortable uh, to hold after some time. I mean, I am complaining about a blaster made for children, uh, but my hand also kind of runs into this, which also can be made uncomfortable. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really, I don't really, can't really complain about uh, blasters ergonomics when it comes to the size of things because it is a toy for children. Not sure if I'd put this in ergonomics, but opening that jam door. Uh, is a little bit hard to do because this is a little bit sticky, a little bit stiff. Um, but then again, that could just be on my Rex Rampage, not yours. Also, the blaster does balance pretty well when you have your hand up front like this. It does balance pretty well. So it's, yeah, it is a little bit front heavy, uh, but it does balance when you have your hand up front and it's quite comfortable. Next point. Um, I guess, I guess compatibility um, and maybe reliability. The blaster is quite reliable and it does seem to be quite compatible with other magazines. A uh, few magazines I had haven't tested with it, which of course would be the uh, Busby magazines. I haven't tried to test the Busby magazines, but Busby really isn't doing much these days. So it is compatible with pretty much every magazine that I tested with it. You know, Dart Zone, Adventure Force, and of course, all the Nerf ones it seems to work with. Uh, dart wise, it does use all the three major brands of darts pretty well. Yeah, being Nerf, Dart Zone, and Adventure Force, they use it uses those darts pretty well. And uh, yeah, I think overall it's pretty compatible stuff. Uh, a couple of things to mention: there are no rails, no Nerf tactical rail attachments on this blaster. There's also no barrel extension or stock attachment point either. You, you can't really accessorize it out of the box too much. So there is that to keep in mind. Uh, something else to mention that it really isn't part of a point. The blaster is relatively quiet. It's not super loud, uh, but that has nothing to do with how much power this thing has. It is a pretty decently powered blaster, I would say, even with it being so quiet. Uh, next point, more of the uh, features. Why, let's just talk about the features of the blaster. So it is a standard flywheel semi-automatic blaster it takes magazines very standard pretty much been around for forever uh, at this point um not a lot of features like there's no sling attachment points i mean i guess this kind of could be i don't know i don't think it's meant to be sling attachment points so we don't have anything with that uh, we do have this scope here which i kind of see as 
sort of a downsign because I would have preferred to have a rail or something. Uh, the scope also kind of, it doesn't really work either just by how far the barrel is from the scope. When using the scope during the accuracy test, I could not use it at all. So I found myself just shouldering it and kind of just aiming back and forth with it without actually looking down the scope. Also something I don't really like and don't really think is practical is dart storage, like singular dart storage in the back instead of magazine storage. I think it would be more practical for a magazine fed blaster to have um, magazine storage, not dart storage. Now, of course this is kind of not, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. The dart storage doesn't really get in your way if you adjust them right. And yeah, I just don't understand why they have dart storage. This is, it, it, it's you're just better off using other magazines rather than trying to load whatever magazine you have. I guess it's there for convenience, but it doesn't make sense to me to have a magazine fed blaster with dart storage in the stock. Next point is gonna be build quality. Uh, this blaster overall is a pretty solid blaster when it comes to uh, whether or not it's brittle. Uh, it is definitely not a brittle blaster. This thing can probably take a beating. Haven't had any problems with the flywheels yet. I hope we don't have any issues with it. When it comes to build quality in terms of everything fitting in, well, we might have a problem with that. As I mentioned before, the, tr the rev trigger and uh, magazine release and magazine well are pretty stiff. You know, that can be seen as a problem, especially because it requires the amount of force required to push some of this stuff. Um, can't barely can use your finger and also this kind of texturing on it kind of scratches my fingers. So there is that to mention. Last point I wanna make is value. What are you getting out of this blaster? What are you getting for, I guess at this point, $32.99, it's new retail price. So what you're getting uh, in general is a motorized flywheel blaster that takes double A's. So it is, I guess, economically better than if it's taking C batteries or something like the BARR, which I'm not gonna mention that anymore. Um, but you do get a 10 round uh, magazine. These do appear to be kind of common these days. They're pretty much on every blaster, it seems. You're getting a pretty high quality when it comes to durability. It's pretty high quality, even though we have some fitting issues with the triggers and magazine wells and stuff. You get 20 darts, 20 Nerf Elite darts, which is pretty nice. You don't just have enough to fill the blaster up, the blaster's magazine up. You also have some extras um, to put in your kind of, I guess, if I'm in my opinion, pointless dart storage. I mean, yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense, but magazine storage would have been nicer. I mean, it's a cool looking blaster, very collectible blaster. All the Dino Squad blasters are pretty collectible. But would I recommend the Rex Rampage? If you're looking to collect the Dino Squad blasters, I think it's full price, it's new full price of $32.99 USD. A little more reasonable than it's $44.99 when it first came out uh, price. If you're looking to just get a blaster, there's other options out there or wait for this to go on sale. Also, something I want to do uh, now is a slight correction, I guess. Um, I stated this blaster came out in 2020. At least that's when it was copyrighted. It says 2020 Hasbro on the blaster. But according to online sources, this blaster came out in 2021, in January. So, in a way, this blaster was made, copyrighted, patented, or whatever, in uh, 2020 but it came out in 2021 in January. So obviously things take time to copyright. All the processing stuff was done in 2020. So I guess it came out in 2021. So that's just something I wanna clear up real quick. Um, also, I have here the Busby magazine from that Walking Dead blaster. Let's see if it fits. And it does not appear to because of the way that the feed like rails are put, are made. So no, you cannot fit uh, Busby magazines in the blaster. Anyway, uh, that will be the end of the review. Uh, comment your thoughts about this blaster down below. Comment what else you want to see on the channel. Uh, be sure to check out my review on the Nerf Dino Squad Armor Strike, the last Dino Squad blaster I reviewed. Uh, be sure to check out my other reviews. I have both those linked at the end of the video. 
Uh, thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.